Hello everybody, welcome back to Deansbury Town. Firstly, apologies in the delay in getting this video out. It's just taken me an incredibly long time to progress with the building and I managed to lose interest in both making it and filming it for a couple of weeks and then I managed to catch COVID. So this is a mixture of videos and still photos, a bit different to normal. I hope you do enjoy it and thanks for watching. Following on from the last video, I've started right in the back corner behind the station and I'm going to create this pair of low relief shot backs. To help force the perspective, I've modelled this in 3mm scale so it's quite a bit smaller than the foreground buildings. Before I started on the building, the first thing to do was remove the old pavements I'd previously created. These were made of cardboard so simply scraped off with a scraper and the waste vacuumed up. On top of the flat surface I made an elevated base for the buildings in this area. This was made from strips of card glued together to form the basic shape. I assembled this on the template I'd previously created just to make sure I got the size right and it was going to fit within the space available. As I'm planning on wiring and lighting all of the buildings in this area I made sure to cut out a number of notches in each of the panels to allow easy access for all of the wiring between the buildings and the power supply under the baseboard. I added plenty of bracing strips to make sure it's nice and sturdy. I'm not sure it would take the scale weight of the buildings but as they're only made of cardboard it's more than tough enough for the job. And here's the final framework in position. This takes us up roughly to the middle of the roadway between the front of the shops and the station building. I didn't mock up the buildings in this area like I'd done in the previous videos so I'm just going to go straight into the construction of them. My initial plan was to use Scale Scenes High Street Backs kit, however the, after the first one here I just built them from scratch as I found it easier than actually modifying the kits. The first building to be constructed is this dark brown brick building. I've now called this number one market hill as this will run along the back right hand side of the layout from the station up to the town. It's a very simple internal construction, just a number of cardboard squares. I've pre-cut some slots here for the internal lighting wires as I found this quite hard to do once the buildings have been assembled previously. So we'll see how that works out. Part of the building on the left hand side here is covered over by the adjacent building so this won't be seen at all and I've just done some very basic interiors on the right hand part. The gap at the bottom just makes it nice and easy to get the wires out and will be underground once the building's installed. The front of the building was designed in Inkscape in the usual way and I've used some parts from the scale scenes kit and just amended them slightly to fit the scale and the layout of the building. On the rear of this front face I've marked here the positions for the LED lights roughly so they hide behind the windows and you won't see them but they will illuminate the room behind. I then assembled the LEDs onto this kind of crude lighting rig here and this is taped into place on the rear of the front wall. The LEDs I'd bought were warm white but I did find them still quite harsh and quite a cool light so I've painted over them with some Revel clear yellow gloss which just gives them a slightly more warmer colour. With a bit of luck the front face fits onto the building and the lighting wires fit within these channels I've cut out. The brick paper was made in Inkscape using Scale Scenes dark brown bricks with some dark blue windows arches taken from the dark blue brick paper sheets. I've bricked up one of the windows which you'll see later is partly obscured by the 1950s orange brick extension to the back of the shops Hence this window is completely different brick to the rest of them. The brick paper was attached to the front in the normal way, folding the wings behind the windows. This final loose flap at the side here will get attached once the roof and the chimney are on. What well, I didn't realise at this stage would this be another couple of months of hanging around until I finally got round to finishing this off. But it worked out okay and I managed not to rip it to pieces. To make the windows for this building I tried something a little bit different than before. I got myself some thin coloured card from Hobbycraft and this was a dark brown colour here and I printed the window frames on this just running this through the printer cut them out in the normal way. I just wanted to try something a bit different to get some different coloured window frames without having the white exposed edges if I'd printed this on white paper. 
A small amount of weathering powder was applied just to break up the uniform colour. I bought some glue and glaze to make these windows with. I found this really useful, it dries nice and clear and is very easy to apply. However, it does seem to dry up in the nozzle within a matter of seconds. Although it's not everyone's favourite thing to do, I did find this occasional foray into window cutting rather relaxing and therapeutic while listening to some music, and I'm quite pleased with the end result. The next building I've called number 242 Hanley Road, and this will run along the back of the layout. This should have been a lot more straightforward to build, but for a couple of reasons you'll soon see, it wasn't, and it took a long time. A very long time. In essence, this is a very simple, straightforward construction, following the principles of the Scale Scenes kit again. Just a simple box with the front cover and a brick wrap. However, it's still quite time consuming to wrap all the windows and fit all the window sills and touch in all the exposed bits of card and fit the glazing, etc. I chose to do a sandwich type construction for this building to give the walls a little bit of extra depth and make it look like the windows were part of the wall construction. To make life a bit easier here I've chosen to obscure the windows on the inside using some net curtains and only illuminate the top two floors of the building just to break it up a little bit rather than having every room illuminated. However totally negating that previous attempt to simplify and to make things more complicated I wanted to put a light in the little extension building which meant feeding the wires through one of the main buildings. So to do this I had to line everything up carefully and work out where to cut the incision for the lighting. As I was doing this I noticed the bricks on the left hand building were a lot bigger than the bricks on the right hand building despite taking a lot of care to make sure I'd scaled and printed everything out at 3mm scale. I'd clearly not done this at all as this left hand building was in 4mm scale. So after a lot of head scratching, I decided to remake the entire front of that building again in 3mm scale. This only took a couple of hours, which I was quite pleased with. However, when I lined this back up to check everything was okay again, I found it wasn't okay. And I'd managed to overcompensate for my previous error and printed it in 2mm scale. So this time history has changed slightly and what's actually happened here is this building was built a very long time ago with very small non-standard bricks and it's been that way ever since and no one's ever noticed. Never mind. So here's the back side of the front wall with some tissue paper used as window blinds and net curtains. I painted some of them blue as well just to break the effect up a little bit. So after testing all the lighting and putting the building back together Finding it all works, I glued the front on again. After getting the brick paper wrong, and then wrong again, but not dealing with it that time, I rebuilt it all, threaded the outside light through, resoldered it all up, powered it all up, and then promptly cooked the outside light as I'd forgot to put the resistor back in. So dismantled it all again. At this point, I was simultaneously glad I hadn't recorded it, but also wished I had for the entertainment value later on in my life. Off came the front, the outside light was replaced, and you can start to see by now why this took so long to do. Finally, the buildings were ready to assemble and were glued together at right angles, and I could start to assemble the extension, which was a very simple box and just had to fit in the corner between the two buildings. I put some small details in here, some shop parts, some shelves stacked here, and you can see these through the windows, the little bucket, and some bottles in storage here. One day I will work out how to make this wiring look nice and neat and tidy, but for now it does the job, it works and it is secured in position. Moving on to the roofs, the flat roof here was made from a piece of very fine grade sandpaper and cut with an upstand and sat in the well of the roof. Finally onto the roofs of the main building. Just for a bit of interest and to try something different, I've made some dormer windows for the small building. These have small cutouts within the roof beneath as well to let some light through. I designed these in Inkscape originally and got it completely wrong and had to do the roofs again. And the final version here is cut using a Cricut Maker machine, which I purchased part way through the build. Uh, got it on a Black Friday sale. 
Uh, I spent quite a bit of time getting to grips with this and that further delayed the build here. Um, but I'm quite pleased with how these dormers came out as a bit of a test. So I think I'll be using this quite regularly now. I also made the main roof tiles here using the Cricut machine. Uh, I you normally use the Scale Model Scenery laser cut roof tiles, but these needed to be a bit smaller here. So these are a scaled down version of that, just cut using thin card. Uh, managed to make these, which I'm, I'm really quite pleased with. I think I'm going to do a separate video explaining how I've done these, um, but they were very simple to attach just in uh, strips using PVA glue and painted in the same way I've painted my other roofs, just using a mix of uh, black and white to make grey, a uh, hint of brown and a hint of blue acrylic paint just sort of randomly applied and then weathered using further blobs of paint and some weathering powders. The gutters on the two main buildings are 1.5 or 2 mil plastic rod attached using some bent bits of wire into small holes drilled into the building. The gutter on the extension is a 1 mil square strip of card and again this was cut on the Cricut machine. As you can see here the buildings do have some additional foundations so these will be bedded into the eventual pavement surface that forms the back of this yard. Well I hope you've enjoyed this video and photo montage. If you've got any questions about the build, please do let me know in the comments below and if you've enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up. This will be my last video of 2021 and rounds off my first year on YouTube. Thank you to everyone who has watched, liked, commented on any of my videos and especially to the 750 odd subscribers that I've somehow managed to attract in this year. To me, this is fantastic and something I never thought I'd achieve, so thanks again to everybody. Hopefully you'll stick around for 2022 as I continue on with the layout build. So until then, I just want to wish everyone a safe and a very Merry Christmas, whatever you're doing, and a Happy New Year. Bye for now.